you guys asked about the test. The top score was a perfect score, 25 out of 25. The bottom score was 12. The average was 21. The median, that means if you lined them up in order, the one that was exactly in the middle was 22. And the mode, meaning the number that showed up the most number of times was 24. And the standard deviation was 2.65, if you know what that means. That would be if you're in stats class. All right, we did the warm up. Now we're gonna do notes on four loops. So stop working on your warm up if you are still working on it. Let's just so you don't wanna get behind. So today we're learning about a new kind of loop. It's called a for loop. A for loop has three parts, an initialization part, a Boolean expression that's evaluated before each time the loop runs, and then an incremental incrementing statement, meaning something that will change a variable uh, every time through. So here's one. Do I highlight it? Nope. Int i equals zero, that creates a variable called i that we're gonna use for this loop. i less than five, that's the Boolean that's like, hey, run this loop as long as this is true. And i plus plus means add, means add one each time through the loop. So this prints zero, one, two, three, four, because i is zero to start, it prints i. Then it comes up here, adds one to i. i is now one. Hey, yeah, it's less than five. Keep going. Finally, till it's four, it adds one to it. Five isn't less than five. It stops printing and it just goes on. <clears throat> so a couple of points, folks. If the Boolean expression is false to begin with, it doesn't run the block of code at all. So you're not guaranteed like one time through. It, it will only even go into the loop if, uh, if the Boolean expression is true at the very beginning. The increment statement is executed before the, the Boolean is checked again. Um, it's not, the increment doesn't run the first time, just runs the initialization. Is it true? Yeah, it goes in, then it starts incrementing and running in the loop. Um, if you only have one line of code, you don't need curly braces. It's probably better just to always use them though, because it's a pretty common error to not, not have them when you didn't need them and then to add another line inside thinking you're inside because it's indented, but it's not. So uh, the increment statement can be a decrement statement too, meaning going down instead of up, see I minus minus. Questions? Well, when we come in here, I is eight. It does not increment or decrement. It then checks, should I do the loop? Is this a true statement? It is, and it does it. Then it increments. Then it checks again. Okay. But the first time in, it doesn't do the increment. So then you'd be thinking, well, I really want eight, so I better start at seven. I mean, it's just, yeah, another question. Yeah, you can say I plus equals two or I plus equals five. Or... So, Here's something that's good to know. Uh, any for loop can be written as a while loop uh, and vice versa. Any while loop can be written as a for loop. Any for loop can be written as a while loop. So here's what we just saw, starting at eight, going down to five, taking one off each one. This is a for loop version of that. And here's a, a, here's a while loop version of that. So anything... Uh, so now we're going to talk about something that one of you ran into uh, last week. It might have been you, Walker. I, I can't remember, but it's called scope. It's uh, the block of code where a variable is uh, declared is its scope. And the scope is marked by curly braces. So if you create a variable inside of a bunch of a pair of curly braces, you can't use that variable another place, just only within those curly braces. Uh, it doesn't exist. You'd be like, well, what do you mean it doesn't exist? I declared it right here, but you have to be in the same scope. So, uh, Does that like in methods where we're telling that it accepts int n, but that int isn't initialized? Exactly. Um, Quincy asked, is that like in methods when it like has a parameter uh, int a or int n, and you do stuff with it, but back at the main part of the code, n doesn't exist. 
you can't say, oh, n equals this, because it's, in fact, that's why you can use the same variable names. Like you may have your main code and you have an int n up there. And then down here you, in your in your method, you could have another int n. It's a different int n. It's not, or it could be the same one because you're passing it over, but it's treated as a copy. Uh, here's an example of scope. Int i equals eight, i greater than four, i minus minus, print it out. And then down here after the loop, I say, hey, system dot 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 print, find a value i. You can't even run this code. Because Java would say, I don't know what I you're, you're talking about. You're like, I'm talking about this I right here, int I equals eight. But this this attempt to print I is after the loop. And um, it, Java would say, you know, unknown symbol. Johan. Then it would work fine. Yeah, yeah. So uh, let's let's make a copy of this slide. And do that. Uh, yes. Yes, that's what I'm going to do right now. Um, let's just say i is zero, and then in here, instead of saying int i, we're just going to say i equals eight. Um, this works fine. So nice and big. This one, we're declaring the variable, and then we do the for loop. And listen, don't do that if you don't need to. It's just, you just, you're making it more complicated. It's great to have a throwaway variable. I is a great throwaway variable. Int i equals whatever. And then you want to do a for loop a minute later. Do another int i. You know, it's fine. They all can be all, they can all be i, unless you have one inside of another. And then I like to use j. But you could do a, b, c. But, uh, there's no need, and it would be just sort of weird to always declare the variable ahead of time and then inside the for loop just say i equals. Like that, that, that that's just making your code more complicated. Um, okay, uh, when is a for loop better than a while loop? If you know exactly how many times you want to run, a for loop is usually better. I mean, define better, just a little less complicated. If you, if you know you want to go, if you want, to repeat 10 times, a for loop's easy. You know, for uh, int i equals zero, i less than 10, i plus plus, you're gonna go 10 times. You don't you don't have to create a variable and then say, while this variable's less than 10, and then add one to the variable each time through. Like, it, it's just, they're, both, both are possible, always, but a for loop is, uh, is better if you know exactly how many times you're gonna run. Uh, I do give it an example here, though. If you're going to ask the user to keep entering things and you don't know how many things they're going to run, a for loop wouldn't be good or as good. I mean, sure, you could say you could make the for loop run a million times and then you're like, I know they're not going to enter a million things because they're a human. Um, but, you know, someday you'll find that person that entered a million things and then your program broke. You're like, aha! Uh, yeah. So, folks, I'm asking you what would be output by this code if you could all look at this and try to uh, figure it out. Don't say it out loud. Maybe get a piece of paper out. Or write it on your screen, you know, on your computer. I don't mean to send it to me. I mean, just figure it out. Someone want to say? Austin. Awesome. Well, it prints, I think it prints four numbers. Somebody else? Quincy? 17, 12, 17. Yeah, 17, 12, 7, and 2. I need to fix my slides so that they're never blocked by the corner control. But this starts at 17. It's going to run as long as i is greater than 0. It doesn't do this first, so it prints out 17. Then it subtracts five. Is this still greater than zero? Yeah, so it prints a 12. Then it subtracts five. Is that still greater? Yeah, prints a seven. Then it subtracts five. Is that still greater than zero? Yeah, prints a two. Then it then it subtracts, and that would be negative. It's not greater than zero, so it fails. 
Um, here's another one, folks. If you could do this one in your head or, you know. Somebody who hasn't helped us yet. Um, Randy. Right, right, right. But it also prints the zero. Oh, so zero, one, two. Comes in, does a zero, adds one, does a one, adds one, adds a two, and then and when you as soon as you get to three, it's not less than three. No, nope, it doesn't do the plus plus. It doesn't do the increment the first time in. First time in, it just declares the variable, says is this true, um, and then runs. I I would like to. Uh, I'm going to give you one uh, extra problem in a second. Okay, so the third problem. So you can figure out what happens here. Someone who hasn't helped us yet? Dylan. Bingo. Doesn't print anything. Uh, here's a great example of one that's not poor, not well written. Hey, I starts at zero. Hey, as long as I is greater than three, we're going to add one each time. But wait a minute. It isn't greater than three ever, so we're not going to go in at all. So that was the example. I couldn't remember what my third example was, so I'm not giving you another example. That was. This is a poorly written for loop. Um, all right, we're done with our notes.